Today we are breaking down and reacting to the Cartoon Network show, We Bear Bears. These three brother bears attempt to find their place in a civilized society and pay their fair share of visits to the hospital. For humans, should be interesting. Before we get into it, if you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Dr. Jordan Wagner. If you enjoy the educational reaction videos and other stuff that you see here on this channel, please smash that subscribe button and turn your bell notifications on. That way you learn when I post a new video. All right, let's dive right in. Possible broken foot. But yep, and that's definitely the only thing yeah. wrong here. I'm gonna have to run a few tests first. Standard stuff, you know. Oh, um, I guess. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> when you're at the doctor's office, your height, your weight, your basic vital signs should be taken before the doctor sees you. The point of the reflex hammer is to check to make sure you have final cord function. You can do your knees, you can do the elbows. Okay. <laughs> You're actually going to grab the radio pulse and to get a quick heartbeat for 10, 15 seconds and then multiply it to get to your minute. When we use a stethoscope, we're actually listening to the sound of the heart, not counting the beats of the heart. We're listening to make sure that there's no murmurs, there's no extra sounds that we would be indicative of a pathological problem. And then we're listening to a lung function. <laughs> I don't know why you try to eject. <laughs> just injured his foot. Like when you go to the doctor's office, it's a focused medical exam, quick history, and then figure out what's going on with the foot. The foot needs an x-ray. Question, is there an infection? Because I saw that it's red. Getting a full on work up here. Interesting. And you wouldn't do a full body x-ray. What the heck? What a waste of radiation. Get an x-ray of the problem. Everything good, doc? It's okay, I guess. Now let's see that foot. Oh! Oh! That's gotta hurt. <laughs> All good. <laughs> you can just put something back in the joint if it's dislocated super easy. It hurts, but once you get it back in, you feel much better. Good news is your test results are done. <laughs> Bad news is that literally everything is wrong with you. Come get him, guys! Wait, what? Okay, uh, what's going on? What? Stop. Hey, oh, hold it. You've never seen these results before. We need to find out if he's contagious to others. Plus, he signed his consent form. What? That bedside manner of this doctor is way off. You wouldn't just go into a room and be like, you have everything. Usually, most things lead to one thing. There's something called Occam's razor. Usually, one thing is the cause of all the ailments that you might have. And then the other thing is, if you actually do have contagious symptoms, wouldn't you? To be protecting yourself and others. Mask, face wear, hazmat suit. This is a strange patient, huh? He doesn't look so strange. He just looks like a panda. Yeah, but I heard he has blue blood. You look at your arms and you're like, my veins are blue. I promise you the blood inside your veins is not blue. It is a darker red versus in the arteries. It is brighter red. It's only blue because of the reflection of the light on our skin related to the pigmentation of our skin, giving this hue relating to the bluish color. Color. You guys are crazy. Please help me. <laughs> help like, help him down. He's too hysterical. Get the gas. That's yes. awesome. We get patients that come to the hospital all the time that are delirious. It could be from medication, infections, acute psychosis due to mental illness, illegal substances. When somebody's in what's called excited delirium, we need to actually calm them down. Kidney functions, their hydration status, being able to give them the medications that they might need. A lot of things going on. So you actually need to kind of shut that excited delirium down. I am doctor. <laughs> oh, you must be the specialty surgeon. So you wouldn't actually wear the white coat into the operating room. You could be just in scrubs and a mask. Once you actually start the procedure, then you scrub in. Ron, you hyperventilate! <laughs> oh, jeez. Ah, are you okay? Uh-oh. Oh! No, oh. oh, peanut butter is gonna die! <laughs> To be honest, peanuts aren't actually a nut. There are a lot of people who have nut allergies, but peanut is actually a legume. There are two different avenues of different types of nuts that we eat, and people can be allergic to one family versus the other or both. Uh, allergy pen! Allergy pen! Oh, come nice. on! Backpack! Uh. Oh no, peanut butter. Dang it. <laughs> Does he have an allergy to it now, too? Hold Take on, the cap off. Man. And the cartoon did a great job of depicting the arrow to the right area. Boom, you slam it in. And most physicians will actually prescribe you two EpiPens, one to keep on yourself and one to keep at home. <laughs> nice. I deserve to perish alone. <laughs> 
Hopefully the kid, ah, nice. Oh, that's, kid's got snot. But how? Anytime they're swelling the face with potential airway compromise, you gotta use epinephrine. Use the EpiPen, stab it through the clothes, and then get to the hospital. You gotta use steroids, you gotta use an H2 blocker, IV fluids, and put somebody on the monitor. <laughs> Bro, you okay? Ice. Ice. Oh man, I need some ice for my head. Blunt trauma to the head, just got a hematoma on the forehead. Question is, is there a subdural hematoma? Typically epidurals are on the side of the head. Subdurals can occur anywhere. It's a different vascular system. What we end up doing outside of a physical exam and checking your vital signs, we'll also most likely get a CT scan of the head, make sure that there's no fracture and no bleeding in the brain. <gasps> Oh, geez, that really did a number on me. Boy, I sure hate it when that happens. Hey, am I right? Now, sometimes you can have chronic headache, dizziness being a little bit altered called post-concussive syndrome, which can last anywhere from days to months, even a year. You definitely gotta be followed up by a neurologist and make sure that nothing further comes of it. What's the internet say, Panda? All I could find was this video. Have you experienced a recent head injury? How about a major personality change? If you answered yes, you could have amnesia. <laughs> amnesia can make people forget themselves, their plants, their cats, and even their beloved siblings. That's What's actually the cure? A good we answer. So you have trained. two different types of amnesia. You have retrograde and anterograde. Can't remember anything moving forward and, and can't remember anything backwards in time. So most of the time, it's when we say amnesia, most people say the backwards in time stuff. And yeah, sometimes all of a sudden people lose memory from head injuries, different medical conditions doing it too, being hospitalized can do it. And then what's the treatment for it? You know, time, there's no actual treatment for it. What's the cure? We ask this specially trained physician. I don't know. This doesn't look good. A doctor couldn't and shouldn't give you an exact time frame of when it would go away. They don't know. If they're giving you a time frame, they're just guessing. Okay, please step onto the scale. Nice, these old school scales. One at a time, please. Wow, that's funny. <laughs> so the question is, is it, are they messing with her or is that really happening? <laughs> I need to do that the next time I'm a patient. Uh, is it a drawing of a horse? Not a drawing of the horse. And literally you go down to see which one you could see best. You have to say three of them. There is some allowance of errors, but you're looking to see 2020, 2030, 2040, 2060, those sorts of things. See how your vision is. <laughs> <laughs> so many people gag. Yes, you gotta be careful. You don't want people gagging. Sometimes gagging actually is quite helpful in the sense that if we stick a tongue depressor in, we're trying to get the tongue to go down so we can see the back of the throat. Patient is like using their muscle against the tongue depressor and pushing it against it. It's like a reflex. But if you're able to get the patient to gag for two seconds, the tongue actually drops and you're able to see the anatomy pretty well. Guys, you have a serious problem. Everything is way off. Here, I'm putting you guys on a cleanse for 21 days. Strictly eating what you are supposed to eat as bears. Inside each folder contains your natural diet. Berries and fish, neat. Bamboo, that's it? That's it. I don't know if I could do this. I can't eat only one thing, I need variety. It's okay, Panda, it's only 21 days. We can get through this together. Great, good luck. Let's check back in in a week to see how you're all doing. It doesn't really sound like a cleanse. It just sounds like a diet appropriate for the makeup of that specific species. Cleanses, I'm not really a fan of cleanses. I'm a big fan of fasting. Fasting is good for you. If you can get up to five days of fasting, then your body goes into autophagy, but then you have to slowly refeed yourself so your body doesn't go into basically pains when you're trying to eat and diarrhea or vomiting any of that stuff this show is actually kind of funny hopefully there's more medical scenes like this in more episodes and i'll do some more videos if you like this video check out this playlist you're gonna love it and as always please make sure you subscribe turn your bell notifications on hit those like buttons and have a great day thank you so much for watching and stay healthy my friends <laughs>